Yeah. For more on the Bitcoin collapse, we want to bring in BK. Come on. Brian Kelly, who is also in Puerto Rico. Why? Because he's a crypto baller himself, and that's where they go. Hi, BK. <laughs> So what did you make? What do you yeah, make of the? That's what you do when you're crypto baller. <laughs> what do you make of the ongoing collapse? And have you actually added to any positions? Uh, have it, we added a little bit to some Bitcoin today. I, you know, the ongoing collapse is a, is a combo of a couple different things. Really, it starts. You guys were talking about the regulatory uncertainty, and I haven't been a big fan of that term. But there is a little bit of uncertainty now uh, because the SEC has sent out some subpoenas, and the question is, what are they going to declare securities? And that's unclear. Some of these, sometimes these tokens act as securities, and sometimes they don't. Sometimes they act as a currency. So until that's defined, a lot of stuff is stalled, and a lot of capital is kind of on the sidelines waiting to see what's happening, and that's why you see this grind down in Bitcoin. I'm going to ask you a stupid, potentially stupid question. No question. No I have no fear no of, of being called stupid. Why is it, though, that the cryptocurrencies themselves are trading down and trading down pretty much across the board equally on the fear of regulation when the regulation looks like it's coming in the ICO part of the business? So that's actually not a stupid question, Melissa. You're quite brilliant with your questions. The reason why is a lot of these ICOs, you need to buy the original cryptocurrency. So the reason why Ethereum ran up at the last year, about uh, second quarter of last year, there are a lot of these ICOs. To participate in the ICO, you need to buy Ethereum or you need to buy Bitcoin. So without that buying flow, that takes a huge, a huge amount of liquidity out of the market. So if we permanently see the flow of ICOs dampened because of increased regulation, then the, new, the past highs on these coins theoretically should not be attainable again, for a while at least. Well, I actually think, yeah, I mean, there, so here's what I think is going to happen. Here's what I'm seeing in the marketplace. You're seeing a bifurcation. You are going to see people invest in the pure currencies. So think Bitcoin, Litecoin, Monero, uh, Bitcoin Cash. Any of those that are truly pure currencies are going to get a lot of the attention. There will be a whole swath of these tokens that will move over to, the, over to securities exchanges that are coming out. Open Financial Network has one as well. So I think you're going to see that bifurcation. You actually could see a bunch of these tokens. We have 1,500 or so now. You might see that whittled down to 500 or so that are really liquid and investable. And those will do quite well. But be between then and now, it's going to be a little rough. So talk to me about this whole Puerto Rico thing. All right. So all you guys go down to Puerto Rico. Is this just some giant boondoggle? Or what is the government? I mean, it, does the government really want Puerto Rico and think Puerto Rico could be the next Bitcoin blockchain capital when it doesn't even have power for its citizens? I thought it required a lot of power, well, too. Well, there's plenty of power Minor. here. I mean, look at, look at all the energy behind me. <laughs> yeah. So, so there are a couple. There are a couple jurisdictions that are really vying for this, and the government here in Puerto Rico obviously is looking for ways to attract businesses. Cryptocurrency is a new business. There is there is plenty of electricity here. Remember, we're not doing mining here. You're simply setting up uh, businesses here. So, I do think this is a viable place, as viable a place as Switzerland, as Singapore, as Hong Kong, and that's what we're all here to find out: is is how to do it in this environment. All right. Thanks, BK.